yet he is not crowned, rewarded, except he strive lawfully. So as long as you're striving lawfully and it's according to the scriptures, that's the main thing, right? The husbandman that laboreth must be partaker of the fruit. Consider what I say and the Lord will give the understanding in all things. Remember that Yahabashai Mashiach of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. When I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds. But the word of the Most High is not bound. It's not bound. You cannot contain this word. You cannot stop this word. As much as you send your opposition, the words of Yahweh Shai, they're already out there. They've already been out there. They're out into the atmosphere. Right? And this word's going to continue to spread. Okay, Isaiah 55 and 11. Okay. This word shall not go out void, but shall accomplish that which it pleases. Okay? And it says, Wherefore I endure all things. That's the mindset the elect are going to have. Therefore I enjoy all things. Everything. Right? We put up with everything. We deal with all types of situations. That's enduring all things. So for you to endure something, that means you need to have opposition for you to endure. Right? If you're enduring, that means it's opposition. If you're not enduring anything, that, that means there's no opposition. Right? And it says, for the, for the elect's sake. So what? Enduring things for the elect's sake. Right? That's who I do this for. The elect. The hopeful elect. Right? For the elect's sake, that they might also obtain salvation. So the elect, they can receive salvation as well. Right? And it says, which is in Yahabashah Mashiach, with eternal glory. Alright? It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, who? Yahabashah. So the hopeful elect, guess what? They're dead with Yahabashah. Okay? If we be dead with Yahabashah, okay? We shall also live with him. Okay? So yes, the elect, they're living with Yahabashah. Why? Because they're dead to this world. And that's why you're really alive. You're, you're only alive through being dead to this world. That's, that's the only way you're alive. Right? Spiritually. Right? And if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he shall also deny us. Okay? That's why we're going to be faithful. Colossians. Go to Colossians 3. Okay? Bear me just a minute. See if I can find it. And part of you mortifying the deeds of the flesh, that's you being dead to this world by mortifying what the deeds of the flesh. Bear me just a minute. All right, let's go to Colossians. Colossians three. This is one. Of, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Right? Colossians three. If you 
got to be risen, right? With Moshiach, Yahweh seek those things which are above. So, a spiritual man, the heart for elect, they're going to be seeking what? Spiritual things, right? Seeking means to inquire. So, inquire more what? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. More faith. If you be risen, right? Because not all of our people are risen. They're still on a low state, a low frequency. Okay? Seek those things which are above spiritual things, where Mashiach tippeth on the right hand of the Most High. That's what we're supposed to be seeking. Things that are above, higher wavelength, higher frequency, right? Higher way of thinking, right? Verse 2 set your affection. What's your affection? Your affection is your love, right? What you desire, right? On the things above. So that's what the hopeful let God be thinking upon, right? You're thinking about the architecture, the buildings that are going to be built up in the kingdom, okay? The brothers you may meet, okay? How many wives you may have, okay? How many children you may have, okay? How many different palaces? different type of um, land, that's what you're thinking about. That's what it means, you're what? You're, you're, you're not, your mind is what? In the heavens, right? And it says, for you are dead and your life is hid with Mashiach, okay? When Mashiach, who is our life, so that's supposed to be our life, Yahweh Shai. Shah Apeh Ren. Shall you appear with him in glory? With who? Yahweh Shai. Right? In glory. In majestic. New bodies, everything. Okay? So now I want to go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Right? Bear with me just a minute. We're going to go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Start at 39. Okay? You know what now, wrong one, that's the wrong one. Oh man, it's a, bear me just a minute, that's the wrong one. Here it is, like, you know what, it is Ecclesiastes 38 and 24, all right? And it says, the wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure. So, in order to acquire more wisdom, you need what? Leisure. So, through having leisure, and leisure goes into what? Time. Okay, activity. Okay. So, by leisure, that's what your time to study. Okay. Because people think leisure is just sports. No, leisure, that's your time to what? To study. Right? For the wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure. So you need to find time to sit down and to study. But a lot of people they ain't got time to sit down and read a book because they're so caught up with what the things of the world. Right? And chasing what pleasures. Right? That's how you what? Gain what? More wisdom. Okay? And he that have little business, right? Little business. So, opportunity also goes from, when you look up that word, from worldly affairs, right? Shall have little business. Shall become wise. So he that have little business, merchandise, shall become wise. Why? Because most of your time is going to be occupied on what? Gaining more wisdom. That's what it's going to be occupied upon. Okay. And it says, shall I become wise. So that's how you become wise because now you're going to be able to not just read these scriptures and study it, you're going to be able to apply it. Right? So what? That's going to make you wise. Verse 25, how can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow? If you're always holding the plow. Right? 
and glory in the gold. And the gold is what? The gold is what? The, to drive cattle. That sharp stick. Okay? And at driving the oxen. So you drive your oxen with that gold. And is occupied in their labours and whose talk is of what? The bollocks, which is what? Work. He that gives his mind to make furrows, alright, which is what? You're in the trenches and is diligent to give kind fodder. In other words, you're feeding what? Your cattle, right? That's occupied with what? Labours of the world. Okay? So I'll be carpenter, right? I'm workmaster that laboreth night and day and they that cut and grave seals right and are diligent to make great variety and give themselves the counterfeit imagery and watch to finish the work so that's going into your daily work for Esau but guess what that's not going to cut it because when your hamshad comes back you ain't going to be cared of how much shekels you make for Esau. Because this whole society is going to crush. So the main thing that it's down to is, all right, you make a bit of money on the side, you have your little hustle, but then what is it back to? This word. A lot of men, they don't see it like that because they're still in the world. They're still in the world, right? As scriptures talk about in John 17, yeah, my, Yahusha says, they're in the world, but they're not of the world. Right? They're just maintaining in the world, but more so, they, they have a spiritual mind. Okay? And a smith also sitting by the anvil, the smith, different goldsmith, blacksmith. Okay? Bronze smith. Sitting by the anvil. The anvil would be known as what? The bench press. Which you want, you would tie what you're making up, you would tie it between that bench, that bench press, right? And considering the iron, okay, work. The vapour of the fire weighs of his flesh. So there's many, that's labour. Blacksmith, that's a, that's a heavy job, right? All that heating, you got the blowtorch, you got the hammer, and what, you're forming whatever weapon that needs to be formed, okay? And he fights with the heat of the furnace and the noise of the hammer and the anvil is ever in his ears. There's a lot of noise, there's a lot of banging, right? Twisting. And his eyes look still upon the pattern of the thing that he makes. So there's a lot of time and attention put into what? These particular jobs. Right? And he watches to polish it perfectly. That's the end finish. So of the potter, right? Sitting at his work and turning the wool about with his feet. He was always carefully set about his work and he made all his work by number. He fashioneth the clay with his arm and bareth down with his strength before his feet. He applieth himself to let it over, right? And the scripture says, every idle word that shall give an account for. So you know when a lot of people walk past, a lot of people are actually getting marked for condemnation. Okay? A lot of people that have came up here, a lot of people being marked for condemnation, to be destroyed. And a lot of people have been marked for salvation. Depending on where they stand with Yahweh Shine. Right? And it says, and all these trust to their hands. Someone else says, no. Those that have that mindset, they trust in their hands, which is not bad. Obviously, as a man, you want to be good with your hands, knowing how to fix stuff, knowing how to get by. But it says all these trust to their hands. It doesn't say they trust Yahweh Shai, it says they trust in their hands. And what does that lead to? Pride. What does this um, system push? Pride. It was done of your own will. It was done of your own account. Okay? And without these, cannot a city be inhabited? Because obviously, that's why you have roads. Okay? Yeah, that's why you have paths. Because you had someone that with his hands, he laboured and he made that. 
right? And without these, cannot a city be inhabited? Without who? These workmen. So it's needed, but they're not prophets. That was, that was their lot to be a builder, be a technician, right? Be an IT technician, right? Be a, a water, whatever, a water, water mechanic, or whatever, right? They shall not dwell, bear just a minute, they shall not dwell, and they shall not dwell where they will, no, go up and down. That's why you have streets, roads. They shall not be sought for in public council. So, if you really want council according to the scriptures and wisdom, you're not gonna go to a builder for that, are you? You're not gonna go to an electronic engineer. That's why the scripture says in Corinthians, I have chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And the scripture says, not many mighty, not many noble, okay, not many wise men. See, I'm shy. He uses the things that are small, right, within the society. And he uses them to what? To show his knowledge, right? They should not be sought for in public council. So you're not going to be seeking for an IT technician to get knowledge through these scriptures. You're going to be seeking a prophet, someone that's in the scriptures day in and day out. That's who you're going to be seeking, right? For prophecy, you wasn't you wasn't gonna go to um a plasterer for wisdom in the scriptures, was you? No. You may go for them for, for advice on that particular work, but not for the scriptures. No, okay. But you should not sit on the judge's seat, right? That's what they're, that's what they're left. Right? And it says, nor understand the sentence 